Hello, hello. If this is our first time meeting, I'm Kenny K, and uh, here we talk about faith, life, but mostly frivolities. And now you're listening to Small Talks Radio. Um, today I am. Today I'm here with you by myself today, and we're going to talk a little bit about you know how production side of this goes on. We're not a big production company or anything. It's just a couple of guys that are uh, producing this and. Um, It'd be fun to do a little uh, gear talk today and a little tech. So first up on this is the, well, what I'm going to talk about is I am using a webcam that's uh, not from my laptop. Um, It's something that you can get from Amazon for $20, $30. Today's Black Friday, so, or I guess it's Cyber Monday, meaning that a lot of things are on sale and... mm, don't remember the brand of this one, but I bought a couple of years ago. It is not a Logitech, so it is a off uh, knockoff brand of Logitech. And yes, I know um, it's uh, made in China, but everything is made made in China. So uh, anyway, so uh, there's there's no need to. I, I if you like the quality of me, uh, I look like this. At least this camera. Um, perform similarly on Zoom, on YouTube Live, um, depending on what platform you use. Uh, it can be Skype, and the picture quality is a lot better than what you typically would get from a uh, webcam from your laptop. Uh, I am streaming with my laptop, so uh, it's got that, uh, that you can see the camera here. And another thing is I sometimes record my audio separately this is a live stream meaning um i won't i'm not recording it i can record it but i am not recording it. sometimes i record it uh using obs and uh, edit it afterwards and post videos but if you're reco- if you're if you don't have a camera like um some of the things that we'll talk about let's say you just have a laptop or if, um and you want to use a, a webcam from the laptop or an external webcam a usb webcam and you want to record it with a uh, higher quality than you would usually get with you know just your computer laptop you can screen record uh using obs and you can make youtube videos that way and i've made some in the past using that method but a lot of the times the my quality is very very poor and uh, there's a couple of ways you can remedy that. Um, there's a lav mic that you can buy, which uh, it's in a box somewhere. I won't be able to find it now. But um, that the mic from your laptop or computer is very, um, it's cheap. So it doesn't do very well. It doesn't perform very well. It doesn't sound great. And uh, you can uh, remedy that by uh, buying external mic. Sometimes, um, you know, some people just try to plug it into their uh, mic inc- mic headphone port in their laptops, and and the gain is not as loud, or it's not as great, so it's hard to hear your voice, and um, it needs to be powered if you want to make it sound louder. You can. Uh, there's certain programs I believe you can download or maybe it may be drivers that uh, amp up amp that up but uh, if you want to go another route you can always buy a USB mic or a USB sound card and uh, amp it up that way instead of just plugging it straight into your uh, computer headphone uh, microphone combo jack the 3.5 um, TRRS and or you can record it separately by using this uh, field recorder. This is this has a condenser mic in it, and you can record it separately and then stick it up in post. Um, or you can use a mic like this, and you can record the video and the audio at the same time. You should always record the video and the audio at the same time, even if you don't, even if you're using this, because then that way you can um, use the waveform of your recordings and match everything fairly easily. It's uh, you just have to. There are dead spaces where it doesn't go up and down or it's little and you just match those up and then all the peaks will match. And that's how I edit some of the videos. Or you can get a mic like this. This is also, a, a, this is a Super Cardioid condenser microphone. It's very cheap. Um, it's a newer or newer. Uh, I don't know if it's 700 or 800, but I got this maybe four years ago, five years ago. 
and I uh, maybe it was three. And I think it was four years ago I got it, and I bought it for thirty dollars, and that's Canadian. So if you're American, it's probably twenty twenty five dollars max, and it comes with those foam pot filters, and I don't like the way that looks. So I got this off eBay for a couple of bucks, and uh, you don't need to spend much to get okay. Uh, quality sound. Obviously, this is not a, a $500 or a $1,000 microphone, um, which has very great, um, very good impedance and uh, picks up a lot of the vocal ranges. But something cheap as this, if you get closer, you get that deep bassy voice. I mean, deep, deep voice sound. It, it picks up a lot of the lows. Uh, it happens with a lot of mics because you're so close to it. But if you're sitting or if you're talking to it a little further away then it sounds a lot normal but uh but if you want that radio voice or um that soothing uh uh deep voice then you can easily go close to the mic and speak softly and you want a screen like this uh metal pot filter works um a sock on it works uh even the sponge ones that they give you they kind of work it's just so that the wind from your mouth doesn't hit the diaphragm of the mic directly and distort the sound so that's or you can also talk this way this way right so most of my breath goes out that way but ooh, but sound they disperse right they they bounce off different areas and come back but if you're not directly speaking to it and then go sideways um, it helps with, you know, you don't hear that harsh P's and all that other uh, stuff you can typically get. And you are less prone to peaking. Let's see. And lights. Um, you can see that I am in a dark room. But I turn my lights off and I have a ring light here, actually, which... Um, I got relatively cheap because I didn't pay for it. Um, there's a lot of things that I do uh, in my personal life that that benefits me uh, in monetary goods. A lot of the things that I buy, I actually get through a deal or a sponsorship type of sorts because I had um, other businesses in the past where they relied on um, feedback per se for product, pro either whether it be for product design or, um, yeah. So uh, I do have a lot of um, gear. For example, you can see those puck lights. Where's my remote? Yeah, those are also uh, given to me, and they change colors. Oh, and there's a remote. Yeah. And you can change them independently of each other if you put them farther away from another. But anyway, you know, ambient LED lights in the back. I have another light behind me. It's it's this way. It's kind of blue. I have this backdrop, and it's uh, making it look kind of cool. This act, this game chair actually was uh, also one of those things where. Um, I ended up getting through product development and have a few more ring lights. Actually, these ring lights are cool. So, I'm not live streaming through my phone, but if I were to, instead of using the bigger ring lights, I can just clip this on. Same thing with this. And, do I clip it on right? Yeah. Oh, the battery. I haven't charged it in a long time, so it doesn't work. Maybe this one might work. Okay, this one works. So, you can see how it lights up my face, right? I have a ring light already on me, so, you know. Anyway, I should tone it out. There's your selfie camera. You put this on, and this eliminates you. So when you're recording, doing a vlog, right, or like a beauty tutorial and live streaming or something, if you don't have access to bigger lights, you can get something really cheap like this. This was probably $15, $20. Um, 
Well, I didn't pick that. I got I got multiple for product design or they were testing which one works better. Um there's the one with a clip at the back, right? And then there's another one where the clip is more round and it's not that little finicky piece. And this I think this is built a lot better than this. The build quality is a lot better. It's a little bit heavier, but like it's a couple of grams different, so you don't notice much. And this just feels better clipping on. It's more tight. I mean, this, they both will do, but this one just feels higher quality, even though they're both uh, cheap white plastic. ABS, uh, none of the reinforcements like the tools, if uh, any of you AVA AA fans know. Ah, and I can go through now some of the camera gear that I have. First, I want to start with this thing. It's a Canon T2i. Actually, T2i with uh, battery grip, so you can do verticals very easily, and it feels like, you know, I know it's not a 1DX. It's uh, it's not a $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 camera, but it feels like it. It feels like you're a pro photographer because you have something really hefty, not something, you know, loosey-goosey where you can drop, which I actually dropped some of my camera gear maybe 10 years ago, very long in the past. Yeah, very far back in the past. I think, yeah, around 10 years ago, actually my first camera was a Canon T2i. This is my third Canon 3 T2i, Rebel T2i. And the story of the first one is I got it just before we went um, as a family, went on a trip to Alberta, Banff, you know, saw, uh, went on the gondola and went to the Rockies and shot some uh, nature photography, you know, uh, portrait, not, not a lot of portraits, just, just just nature photography. I did a lot of, you know, landscapes and it was fun. So that's where I got mine. And then I stopped taking photography for the next seven, eight years and I sold mine. But, you know, I came across a couple of these recently for very cheap. Um, and I bought them and I sold one. I'm trying to sell this one too. And I made a, you know, a little bit of money. And um, and for people that don't have gear and want cameras or, you know, uh, want to be able to upgrade, you know, buy some, so flip it, buy something cheap, buy some, it doesn't have, to, you don't have to get, you know, a professional full frame camera right away from the start. You can get something cheap that's relatively, you know, low on budget. For example, this, I think I got it for $150 with the battery, um, battery grip and five batteries. Uh, and actually, this is a kit lens, uh, the zoom lens 18 to 55. I actually got this 50 miller macro lens with it, and it was $150 Canadian. This lens, I can sell it for, you know, $175, $200 alone. So if I sell this, it covers for everything. This is practically free. I had a few people look at it, but uh, they didn't pull the plug because I didn't. I don't like to, I like to get more money than I can. I like to hold on to things. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I like a slow dime versus a quick nickel. So, because uh, inventory is not usually the easiest thing to get by, especially if you're dealing with this at the price that you're willing to pay for them. So, yeah, you can get something like this and flip it. The last one I bought. I also bought that one for 150 and I sold it for $250. Yes, I did include some stuff in it, like a wrist strap or whatever. That was like a couple of dollars. And I did include uh, a microphone that I didn't use, a shotgun mic. So it worked out. Yeah, this is very good. Because, okay, so this is the T2i, right? So. The one after this, at least the Rebels, uh, the IT, I think it's like Kiss X 550D or whatever. Um, international, they have different names on it, but at least for the ones in North America. From the T3i, they have a articulating screen. This one doesn't have it. So if you want an articulating screen, go with the T3i, T4i, T5i, T6i, T6i, T7i. And I think Canon has T8i now. So you can get that, you know. But, you know, they're all APS-C cameras, even the T2i. Um, I would not get the T1i 
because the T1i actually don't have a microphone jack. So if you want to upgrade, um, make your video sound better when you're doing YouTube or, you know, wedding photography, this is very passable as a wedding camera. Um, and you can also use it for video just because because uh, you can uh, put an external microphone in it and it would sound really good. Um, don't use the onboard mic. Unless you can't, unless you, but you can, you can buy a fifty dollar mic, forty dollar mic, and if you're doing wedding photography, you're getting paid. So invest in a little bit here. You don't need thousands of dollars. You don't even need hundreds of dollars. But you know, this with the with the macro lens, where I mean, if I sell that, this is practically free. But I got it for hundred and fifty Canadian with many many batteries, meaning if you're an American. Where if in USD it's, it's closer to a hundred dollars, so and it's would have been free if I sold it, but I'm actually keeping it because I wanted to sell it at like two hundred something dollars versus one hundred and fifty, uh, which other people have offered. People say, you know, why didn't you, you could have? I should have probably sold it. That's what a lot of people think, but I don't think so because uh, I like to keep some of my stuff and I, I use them. So anyway, this is the story of the T2i. Next on the list is this Panasonic GH3. When this came out, this was a very ca capable, very capable video camera. Um, it has a 9mm uh, fisheye Olympus lens, and it's actually quite good for vlogging because this one has an articulating screen. And the 9mm is very wide. It distorts the picture a little bit and makes it look kind of... I mean, I, I like to call it artistic because it warps and curves and extends and stretches the lines. But the colors are on this is great. And this is a very good video camera because the codec in here is just, I don't know, the pictures. Uh, it's, you don't even need to edit it sometimes to color grade it. And it'll, it'll look amazing just off the, off the camera itself. Um, one thing is that when, I got this for $100. Uh, I don't know if I should have, but I do get a lot of offers for people to, you know, take this off my hands for a hundred dollars. Um, so I guess I don't, it's like, it's not nothing, but, um, if you were to buy this lens, it's $125 Canadian. So, I mean, with the body for a hundred dollars, it's okay. It's very, uh, good deal. One thing about this is why it was so cheap is cause it, it was, it's partially broken, uh, the viewfinder, the optical viewfinder is not working, but the LCD is fine. So um, I rarely use a you know viewfinder because the only time you use it is if there's too much sun and there's no there's too much glare or something and you can't see it. The LCD gets not bright enough, but the screen's bright enough. And I don't know this. I just bought it because it came with an extra battery to it. I actually talked to two people today that were interested. Um, they didn't pull the plug, so what can you say? Another camera of mine in this list is an EOS M. It's the first Canon, you know, mirrorless camera. It's tiny. It's tiny. Actually, let's measure the size. It's about four inches wide, a little bigger than that. And then it's about an inch and a half. No, not even an inch and a half thick. So this is a very tight camera. And it has the same AP or similar size APS-C. I don't, I don't know if it's Digic 5. But um, it doesn't. It has a contrast-based autofocus. So it's, okay, not the fastest. But for a consumer camera, it's very good. And it's tiny. And it fits in pockets. That's why I have this uh, little... Uh, EOS M camera zoom lens on here. I got this with my another camera that I'm going to talk about, but because it's a EOS M mount, you can buy a uh, lens for these for fairly cheap, especially the manual ones, like the with Chinese manufacturers. You can get with them for like $50 or something. Um, with a very good aperture, very wide 1.8, you know, 35 mil, 50 mil, uh, 25 mil. I've seen and they're like under $100 which is, you know, very, very affordable if you wanted to do some photography. 
that. So what happened, the story behind this is I actually bought this for $200. This, a lens converter so I can put EF uh, mounted lens on it and a 1.8 uh, 50 mil nifty 50 that's right uh that itself is around 165 dollars canadian and you know this adapter from conway and this usm camera i don't know what the value is probably 300 dollars, 200 dollars, something like that uh 300 400 dollars maybe but um all included i bought it for 200 dollars yeah, well, it comes with a battery and a charger, um, but yeah, that's uh, very inexpensive, and a good thing about this camera is that you can load Magic Lantern to it, and you can shoot raw, so not a lot of cameras can do it, but with Canon, older Canon cameras, uh, Magic Lantern is a possibility for that T2i, and this, um, it's out uh it's an aftermarket program you load onto an sd card and make these into you know it's pretty much the equivalent or i guess to make sense of it it's like overclocking your phone or sorry your computer you know how you overclock and make it faster with more features and it just makes it better you know uh it gives up ability to uh record at higher um record at different you know um profiles or whatever there's a lot more options into it that canon doesn't give and you're not like rewriting the firmware or anything it's the program itself is loaded into an sd card and uh, you can make this into a very capable video camera uh, and you can yeah there's focus peaking on it so anyway so i got it for 200 dollars. the thing is like i said i mentioned the, the adapter is around 60 dollars in value if you were to buy it um, if you had a M e e EFM lens mount and you wanted to, you already had, you know, EF lens on it, you want to put it on, it's going to cost you that much money unless you buy it used. Anyway, so I got all these three things for $200. The lens, the 1.8 uh, 50 nifty that I got, I sold it. I sold it like in a day, in two days. Yeah. So I sold it in two days and they sold it for $100. So effectively, that adapter and the camera itself it was a hundred dollars. And this is the SL one. This is, I guess it's the camera, the internals. Uh, it's similar to a T4i, T5i. T4 and T5 is almost the same. It's pretty much the same camera. They just rebranded it and, you know, they didn't really upgrade it. They just had, they released it just to say that they have more cameras in the line or it's something new because T4i has been out for a little bit. And this camera is actually quite tiny for a uh, DSLR. It's actually what, uh, at the point of release, it was the smallest DSLR in the world. And... Even today, it's quite small. And with a 40 millimeter 2.8 pancake lens, it's quite small. Yes, I do have this uh, camera grip on it. So it doesn't make it look a little chunkier, but I love, it just feels so good. And it's tiny and it's not, it's so light. And I know it's not a mirrorless, but you can't get something like this. Actually, maybe you can if you if there was I don't know if there's battery just for SL2 or SL3, which is the newest compact uh, DSLR out there. But this is man, oh man, it's, it feels like a really good sturdy camera, and it costs well. This was two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, yeah, the the sensor in this this is also a crop factor, but um, APS-C, but APS-C sensors are quite big. Oh. Yeah, so the GH3, the Panasonic GH3 is a micro for thirds, micro, uh, micro for thirds camera, and uh, the sensor is a lot smaller than the APS-C, so um, there's a bigger crop factor comparing it to a full frame camera. But the APS-C is only what like 1.6, so a 40 mil on here times 1.6 is like 50 something mil, so maybe 
it's a uh, it's a good for uh, street photography portraits, and uh, the SL2 it has a articulating screen. So I guess the ones that I got stuck with, you know, the T2i, the SL1, they're the latest cameras until those, you know, uh, tilting articulating screen came as came out. But it's okay. I will talk about that a little later. But uh, yeah, that's my SL2. I love this. Just. feels so good in your hands and this is i guess my main camera for now it's a camera oh canon m50 it's a mirrorless camera um now they have the m50 mark ii which is supposedly a little better version of this camera but it's i don't know to me it seems almost the same they haven't really upgraded it i think just like the T5i from the T4i, it, it's, it's pretty much the same camera. And, you know, they didn't add any features to make it worthwhile. I think it's, if you have, even if you have the money, I would just go. Oh, sorry about that. I think I was disconnected for a little bit. But, yeah, so the thing is, I would get the Mark One, not the Mark Two, for the M50, just because the price difference, it's uh, negligible. And like me, if you're uh, smart with your money, um, go with the use. Uh, you can get them referred from uh, Canada or get them on sale like today, uh, Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday. You know, Christmas holidays, uh, specials, there's always sales going on, but uh, you can do it for very cheap. I actually have a, a, what do you call a L bracket, and it allows me to quick snap into a quick release, and from this mount, I can do it vertically and take a vertical portrait lens very easily. I, Yeah, uh, quick plate. Um, and it also has this little nip here and makes it like a pinky pinky grip and, you know, you can hold on to it a lot better. Uh, I have this uh, camera relocation, um, cold shoe relocation mount or hot shoe, whatever. It's cold. It's cold. These are cold shoe. That's a hot shoe. So I guess it's a... Uh, uh, cold shoe relocation mount because it doesn't transfer over the hot and I have this light Which gets quite bright and I have this mic and if it if I plug it in this m50 Becomes a very capable Blocking camera which most people hold like this even I used to hold like this until I started doing this I did I started doing that because I saw Peter McKinnon uh, vlog and that's how he holds his camera. And I'm like, why haven't I been doing that? Anyway, um, that makes, you know, camera. Uh, this is further away from you. Your frame's a lot wider. And um, right now, on here, I have this thing. It's a Viltrox Speed Booster. So uh, this has a crowd factor 1.7. Well, I guess. Or no, no, 0 0.7 to 1. Yeah, so with that attached to the APS-C sensor, with the math, it's actually, once you, once you mount an EF lens to it, it makes it pretty close to a full-frame sensor. It's a little bit, there's a little bit of crop, but it's like, it's like 1.1 something. So it's, so I'm, so with this setup, I'm able to use an APS-C mirrorless camera and make it a full frame, uh, make it into a full-frame uh, comparable camera at least uh and it's it's like having a full frame camera but it's lighter and it's cheaper a lot cheaper um because uh the speed booster was around 200 dollars and the camera well 
I think in the U.S. it's probably five hundred dollars now. So, with I mean, the speed boosts are cheaper in, in the state uh, states as well because the conversion. And this is a twenty mil to one thirty five um, Canon lens. Is it a Canon lens or Sigma? Yeah, it's a Canon lens. It has a, a IS, so which is a very good. But um, some of you guys know that do photography. If you have a zoom lens and you point it down. The barrel just shifts and, and goes down really fast. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of annoying. It's called lens creep. And what I did is uh, use this hairband. What I do, I, I, I wear these. I get these at the dollar store, and I would put it on the zoom mac, macro part uh, of the ring, and then on the, the body. So it's kind of like a friction that keeps it from keeps the lens from creeping down right it goes back in but it does that when you slide it down but with this on it doesn't do that so um makes it so much easier to take shots when you're pointing it down if you're above and you're pointing it down or if you're really low and you know sometimes when you get it down it doesn't extend and start you know you don't want to damage the front of your lens right so because it hits rock or something because it slides down you can do that and also it makes it easier when you hold it out like that to vlog right because this would shift as well and yeah looks like camera set up for now and i also have this uh oh i have one and one more camera i have this uh Eight man 4K uh, action camera, which I saw got the stuff that I told you about product, and uh, this is my favorite lens, at least for now. It's an f 1.8, no 1.4. Is it a USM? Yeah, USM 50 camera. So it's similar to 50 50, but it's uh three times the price, four times the price. Anyway, so it's but it's you know the best 50 okay it's not the best there's the l series and there's the art uh from sigma but without spending a thousand dollars or more um nine hundred dollars or more you get something like that i think in here in canada it, with tax and everything it comes out to six hundred dollars a lot cheaper in the states as always but i think i got it for 300 uh guy posted it for 350 and i bargained and got it for 300 dollars. so almost half price actually i can sell that flip that now and probably you know sell it for 375 400 dollars and make a little bit of money and i buy and sell things um as i used to do that as a hobby i do that full time now but uh it's just so fun because you get to play with the things that you want. And if you don't sell it, you get to keep it. But if you sell it, you have more money to buy something new or upgrade, right? So for those, for, I have sold a couple of cameras too. And I can keep all of them and have fun with them, uh, take shots or give it to people as gifts. If people wanted to do something, you're like, yeah, you want to vlog here? You want to take kit, uh, photos of your kids here? Or I can sell them. Yeah. And uh, you can flip it. And if it, the thing about buying and selling a lot of these things is that you want to, you don't want to buy things that you don't want to keep for yourself down in the future as a, as a last resort, unless you know, it sells really well or whatever, unless you get a super crazy deal and then you can just oh, fly it off right away uh, the day you post it. But there's zero, like there's zero risk if you buy it for yourself. And you know you're going to keep it. And another thing to keep in mind is that when you buy it, ask for a deal. You know, if it's uh, something that you don't need, sometimes be ready to walk away with it. Ah, which reminds me, I got uh, right the lens, the twenty to one thirty five in a in a two point eight uh, forty millimeter pancake lens. I got them for three hundred fifty dollars. I sold one of them for two fifty. And, or at least I sold the 40 mil for 250 and no, I f sold it for $200, meaning, um, that 20 to 135, um, it, 
only costed me $150, which is very cheap. I can sell it for more than $200 easily. Um, I'm not going to. I did list it. Uh, I do get some requests, but I like to keep it for myself because I 24 mil, you know, at the smallest uh, focal length. Uh, it's a wide angle, so it's it, it's great for uh, vlogging. And since I have the speed booster in it, it's they're probably 25 mil equivalent, so it's very serviceable uh, and it's fun to use. It's a little, it gets a little heavy, but if you had a full fan camera, it would be heavy anyway. It would be heavier. Um, yeah, so I did that. That's the story of the lens, lens creep. And talking about an articulating screen like this. Especially when you're vlogging and learning to, you know, not be weirded out, not be weirded out to uh, do your, uh, what do you call it, vlogging or looking at the lens. See right now I have a screen and I have a, what do you call it, um, my webcam there, but in the screen down here. I look at I look at them both, but I mainly look at my screen where all the I/O is at, and I do that because I'm self-conscious. Most people, when they look at a camera, a piece of little glass or lens, they get weirded out. I get weirded out, um, and if there's a choice for them to look at that or look at the screen, they tend to look at the screen. When 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 you go on, you know, um, a conference call on web, with webcams, everyone is looking at their screen. It helps because the webcam is right in the middle and slightly above, so it doesn't look as bad, but they're all looking down, right? So once you, if you want to, you know, get personal with people that you're shooting the video for, if you want to look, you know, if you're not shooting at the person from a different angle and you want to make make sure that, you know, uh, the video is very, very uh, personal and intimate and you want to look at when you're looking at the camera like this, um, this screen is actually a distraction. So when people vlog, you know, they talk about the articulating screen, you know, with the I because you can see the frame. Oh, I'm back. Yeah. Anyway, so people, when they vlog, they need this screen like that. And they want that screen because they want to frame themselves in that screen and kind of see what other people will see down the road. But what ha when, when that happens is that you don't look at the lens and you look at this articulating screen to look at the frame. The thing is, okay, you got the frame. What happens next when you're vlogging? You still look at that screen. And that's why some people like Casey Nice that they wear sunglasses so they can't track where their eyes are going. I think, um, you know, Casey is. I don't need to talk about him, but I think, you know, you don't necessarily need an articulating screen or a fit bump screen like a lot of the Sony ones have or the GH7 Mark II, whatever. Uh, and I think it's good enough. Because all you need to do is take a sample shot, look at it. It doesn't have to be a video. Just look at the composition, and then you go back. If you're really, you know, conscious about what what you want on your frame. When you're vlogging, it doesn't matter too much because you usually move around, talk, or whatever. And you see things that are around. But if you use a wide enough lens and you're comfortable of... I mean, after you've done a couple of recordings and edited it, you can see what your camera looks like and what it does when it stands out. So you technically can, you you learn how you're feeling yourself and you learn the surrounding around you and you'll see, oh, from here to here, it's going to be the, um, it's, that's whatever's between that will be in your frame. And, and do you really need to check what you're being, what you're, um, what you're shooting? I mean, it helps, obviously, but it's like I said, it's a distraction because the screen generally um, 
makes you uh, it's a distraction for you so i think if you're a vlogger you t you don't need the screen and i think sometimes it's better if you don't do it because because some um you know there's no distraction and with these cameras you know, without the articulating screen you train yourself to look at the lens a lot more and if there's less distractions i think you'll get better at it like for example if this screen was black i cannot i wouldn't know if i was live you know if the you know if the internet went down i was just talking to him until you know stuff like that but, i mean it's good to know but a lot your uh, your camera usually doesn't shut off in your recording on this uh your battery dies but you check that before you start taking your clips and oh this is 40 mil so i can't do that hand thing hand trick so i had to hold it out like if i would to do it so regularly by not having the articulating screen or at least having it and then flipping it over when you're vlogging and not looking at it have it behind this you know you turn it around and put it back like you'll look so much better in your videos and i think there's a strong case for um non-articulating screens i mean i think it's good for vlogging just because you know, you get stuff like, uh, you get that extra training out of it. See, I'm looking at the screen too. So that happens a lot. And the rest of my gear, right. I am using an audio interface to record, um, through this condenser mic. So that is that. And, uh, that's, uh, what my production gear generally looks like. Did I miss anything? Whoop. That's a reminder. I'm a little early today, so I am recording, and I will be, you know, a lot of the times when I edit uh, videos for YouTube, I use a gaming computer because it has a dedicated GPU, so things run a lot better. I used to have an old computer that had an APU. It was a 10-year-old computer, not 10, maybe 7 years old, and it wouldn't run, you know, any editing programs like DaVinci Resolve or anything like that, so... I had to upgrade. I sold a computer for two hundred eighty dollars. I wouldn't pay two hundred eighty dollars for it, but someone bought it, so that went into the cost of buying a gaming laptop, which is my main and only driver. And uh, I think uh, the show went a little longer today, but these are the gears that I use. You don't need to have a lot of money to start. Um, doing youtube podcasting whatever uh you can do it on a budget like i said if you had a phone all you need is one of these clips it's over here these clips and you can make videos with uh you know lapel mic you know um and don't say oh i don't have 20 30 dollars well if you don't there's not much i can say but the thing is you probably did have that money but ended up buying an iphone and I am currently using a Motorola phone that was $200 Canadian. It's an international version, so it has a dual SIM in it. Oh, um, the re there's a reason why I use dual SIM. One is just for talk and the other is for data. Um, my data plan is like $5 a month, and my talking to text plan is like $15. So $20 a month I have. Um, that, and that's my phone bill. And this phone is, it was $200. So, like, why you know people spend seven eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars on a phone and complain that they don't have money to buy camera or equipment well it's, if you have money to buy a phone like that or i don't know i mean I, i'm not saying you have to buy a 200 hundred dollar phone but that's the choice that i made because you don't need a you know expensive phone to do a lot of these things and this phone's plenty capable of enough plenty capable to do a lot of you know daily uh tasks and if i had no money to buy cameras or mic i would just 200 dollar phone a 10 dollar light 15 dollar light 15 dollar mic that's all you need that's 200 and that's under 250 dollars and that would cover not just you know your youtube gear but you have a phone there too so it comes with it came with the case it came with the case for free so i don't there's you can do stuff on a budget this mic was cheap is very cheap but it sounds a lot better than you know a standalone uh mic that you get from your phone or 
your laptop and it, this mic was only you know twenty thirty dollars the lights i got them for free but you can like i said you can use something like this you if you have a you know flexible gooseneck lamp you can use that to make it look a lot better in this camera the camera that i'm using it's like i said it's another 30 dollars. yes they add up but a lot of these things i didn't pay for so that's why i'm using it if i wanted to make quality a lot better for production i can i do have cameras but you don't need to and i don't need to and I don't do it because it's a hassle to get the HDMI's out and, you know, uh, use a video capture card. Actually, the so um the Canons, they have a new utility out that's no longer in beta, I think. It's, it's people, for the people in, in the U.S., um, the there's a compatibility list and you can see if that works. And you can use it as a webcam, but, you know, it doesn't have HD, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's not even 720p. So, I mean, it will since you can use a lens, you can you can stretch those pixels a lot better with uh, better quality images, uh, better lighted quality images, and each those pixels will have better detail. But that being said, you don't need a lot of gear to do anything. And then, like I said, my the gear that I'm using, it's you can get everything under a hundred dollars yeah it is possible to make you know what i do a lot better uh, but there's no need to do that and if you're the people that that don't want to create content or make things better uh, because uh you fear that you don't have the right equipment to do something I don't know. They are just excuses, and they were excuses for me too, because I wouldn't, I didn't like to do, I mean, I wasn't doing stuff like that. So, anyway, that's enough rambling for tonight, guys, and uh, I'll see you next week, probably with Jeremy. We might talk about something interesting, but like I said, mostly frivolities. Good night.